they, they look at the outside. They're, you know what I mean? They look in the mirror. They're not real happy. They're, you know, they're, you know, they're touching the love handle, a muffin top, or whatever. So they're looking at the outside. I, I won't touch my love handle right <laughs> now. I do. Oh, it's there. It's there. It's, I don't know if that's a handle or a tire. I don't know what that I know. is. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> we can fix that. Okay. <laughs> This is The Brandon Smith Show, and I am your host, Brandon Smith, and the entire purpose of this show is one singular thing, and that is to help you live a life that much more free from dysfunction. Today's topic is about how do you balance all of life's demands and still kind of maintain your health and wellness, particularly your diet, as you're kind of going through the work day, work week, and you have all those temptations of candy bowls and donuts and cakes from birthday parties and client dinners and all those kinds of things. So to help us on this journey, I have got an amazing guest with me, hey. Jacinta Harb. Jacinta, how are you? Hey, I'm fabulous. I am so thrilled to have you here Thank to you. kind of help us on this journey because I know this is something, even the last three weeks for me, I've been doing a ton of travel and lots of client dinners and mm -hmm. that's been great, um, but I'm, feel, I'm feeling fluffy. Feel a little fluffy. I, I am feeling <laughs> a little fluffy. And with all that travel, it's, there's not a lot of time to even get exercise in too. So I'm really uh, wrestling with this. So uh, before we go too much down uh, our path, I definitely want our listeners to learn more about you. So you are the founder of Sparkle Wellness. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Sparkle Wellness. And I'm just curious, how did you get into this? What, what's been your kind of career path that kind of got you down to this health and wellness space, which we also desperately need? Well, as you can imagine, everyone has a story. Yep. We all have stories. So my health story is that I was overweight in high school, ran that mm. through college, had a little too, too much fun there, and I was not living my best life. And it mm. was, it was, I was, I struggled with my weight and I wasn't living my best self and I wasn't sparkly like I am now. And I actually was pretty miserable. Mm. Fast forward. And that was just, in, in, did you know that at the time? Did, could, did you, oh, yes. Did you say, you said, you just, I just don't feel good. I feel a little miserable. Yeah, I mean, it kept me from doing social activities. It kept me from uh, really advancing in my life. It was, you know, it, it was a hindrance. Yeah. I was not feeling my best self. And so when I decided to take care of that in 1999, so this is my 20th health anniversary. Awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. And I've been the same exact weight for 20 no years. No way. Absolutely. No I'm, way. I'm the exact maintenance queen. Weight? Yes. Last night, even my husband looked at me and he said, you're so amazing because you've been the same weight for 20 years. And I said, it takes a lot of hard work. Yeah. It was funny. I, since I've been traveling, I watched the uh, Mr. Rogers documentary uh, on the plane. Yeah. And it's a really good documentary. But anyway, one of the random things about Fred Rogers, he weighed 143 pounds his entire life. Love it. Exactly the same, exactly the same weight. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So same, you've been, had that discipline for the last 20 years. So you had that realization, you had that kind of epiphany. Uh, and then, and then did that didn't take you down the path of saying, I want to now do this for others? Yeah. So when you feel that awesome, Brant, I mean, you feel so awesome when you feel like you, you have a secret. So when I finally, you know, release the weight, I don't say loss cause I'm not finding it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so well said. I'm saying release. Okay. okay, so I'm going to release the weight. And so when I finally released it, I felt so good and I love to help other people. So the combination was, was I have to find a place where I can help other people feel as good as I felt. Mm. If you have a secret, you have to share it. So I became working and I started being a leader in a, another company and working for another company in the weight loss industry. Yeah. And I did that for several years. Okay. And then in 2013, I started feeling like I needed to... Uh, fly and I became an entrepreneur and started my own company awesome and it has been absolutely over the top amazing awesome so five years yeah I just celebrated five years this year so excited excellent yeah. excellent uh, uh okay so now that we are kind of up to this point and we're going to talk about kind of how people engage you yes so w w your typical clients what do they come to you seeking okay so my typical client is usually the working professional who has 
a career and a family sometimes, and they're trying to figure out how they can manage their lifestyle in a healthy way. And there's a lot of competing factors. There's work, there's kids, there's volunteer, there's all kinds of things that get in the way of them living their best life and trying to release the weight Mm -hmm. and feel better and start exercising is where I come in. I am what you call an external accountability partner. You're trying to meet some goals, but you need some help. Yeah, totally. So I help people create their lifestyle, their plan for them that works best for them. I treat everyone very individual because we all are. Mm. I'm not a plan where I, it's a cookie cutter, here's a plan, buy. No, we create the plan that works best for you. You said you travel, right? I do this year. I would have a travel plan for you. Awesome. We would create something before you go. I would check in on you. You'd come back and say, Jacinta, I killed it. Right, and I would check in I on released, you. I released some weight. I left. <laughs> I left some weight in another city, and it, and I'm not going to go pick it back up. That's right. I, <laughs> I work with uh, uh, men as well. My my clientele is predominantly women, high professional, high achieving, working women. Yep. That's predominantly my clientele, and I have some men as well. We call them Spartans. Okay. And they do, frankly, they do amazing. And I help them with their travel, making good decisions, intermixing their life's challenges with trying to stay healthy. That, trying to do that. And I help with that by providing goals, skills, strategies, tools, and tips. Mainly, I am there for you. Okay. So think about our listeners who are listening to this show right now. Absolutely. And they're thinking about, gosh, I really want to get healthier and more well in 2019. And I'm part of that group because I, I want that too. Absolutely. How how What's a good way we can approach that? So I have this... Every year at Sparkle Wellness, we do a theme. I like keeping things in themes. It could just because I'm a lady. And you do it coming into the year. So you've into got a new year. theme for 2019. Yes. You want to know? I'm Yes. You're dying. It's, I'm such, dying a, it's such a guy theme. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Think Mel Gibson. Braveheart. Okay. You're going to be a wellness warrior oh, I like in that. 2019. And that's so cool. I like that. Warriors do this. They act. They don't talk. Okay. I have to get my people to act. Action will open the door, but consistency will keep that door open. All right. All right. Yep. So being a wellness warrior has five components to it. Okay. Okay. Think of it as a wheel with the five spokes. Yep. Everyone looks at the outside of the wheel, right? They're looking at the outside when they come to me. They come to me because they're they're feeling fluffy, like you. Ah, uh, just kidding. And <laughs> they want <laughs> to. I am, I am feeling fluffy. It's well, true. this is what I work with. I love it's it. True. I love it. And so th- they look at the outside. They're, you know what I mean? They look in the mirror. They're not real happy. They're you know they're, you know they're touching the love handle, a muffin top, or whatever. So they're looking at the outside. I, I want to touch my love handle right <laughs> now. <laughs> I do. Oh, it's there. It's there. It's, I don't know if that's a handle or a tire. I don't know what that I know. is. It's all right. It's all right. We can fix that. Okay. But everyone likes to look at the outside. My company is mainly known from looking in the inside. And that's okay. using your brain. One hmm. of the key corns, one of the key uh, values of my company is health is in your mind, not in your mouth. All right. You're intelligent. I'm intelligent. Your wonderful staff here is intelligent. They know what to do. I have to come in as the external accountability and help you reach your goals yeah okay it's your mind that's keeping you you know what to do but why aren't we doing what we need to do that's where i come in yeah okay so the wellness wheel there's five spokes to the wellness wheel okay okay the first one is and if by the way if you don't look at the inside where the spokes are your wheel's not going to go the spokes keep everything together on so your you need wheel. all five is what you're you saying you need the inside Okay. Okay. Number one is your spiritual. That's different for everybody. Okay. That could be meditation. That could be church. That could be whatever they think. But that's an important component okay. for people. Spiritual is number one. Spiritual. Physical. Physical number two. That's diet. That's exercise, right? Yep. Number three, emotional. Emotional. Okay. Next one. Yep. Relational. Relational. Last one, mental. Mental. Okay. So that's just five, five things for the wellness wheel. Yep. At all all of us are always going to be working on those. None of us are going to have all of those going at the same time. You might have two or three that you're feeling really good about, but you know there's a couple in there that are a little rusty. Yeah. And we help you with that. Okay? So those are the five components to being a wellness coach. That's what I am. I'm looking at all of those because those all affect your wheel from going forward. So the presenting challenge people typically bring you is they say, I don't feel good. Like I, I feel maybe my... 
maybe I've, maybe I've I've picked up a few pounds, or I'm, I just don't I don't feel as energetic or as healthy or my best self. And then you use those kind of five spokes to determine the best path forward. Absolutely, and sometimes we might just work on one. Yep. Right. And a lot of times that's the mental one. Okay, I was going to say you're going to go the physical. Now you're, you're changing me up a little bit. You're going mental. Okay. Well, so how do you start there? Well, we start there because that runs everything else. The whole mental, this whole part, the yep. head, runs the entire rest of your body. You know what I mean? What you think about, you bring about. Mm. So if I spend more time on the mental component, that mental spoke, I can help you with the physical. Right? Yeah. It's the attitude. It's the positivity. It's the I can do this. It's the visualizing success. It's, it's, that's the mental part. You study any great leader in this country, any great motivational person, any, anybody, it's all mental. Right? Yeah. Once I think about it and I get that visual in my head, I can do it. So what's an example? Can you think of without uh, naming names? Or what would be the example of, of how you maybe helped a client and, and you, took, you start the mental side to get them to unlock what they wanted to see on the physical side. So I love that I get to do, at the beginning of each year, I challenge my clients to do a 5K race a month. Oh, a month. A month. One race. Year-long challenge. It's all about the consistency. That's what I'm looking for, the consistency. So we kick off our race tomorrow. Tomorrow's our big race. I'll have 100 people there um, at the race in Marietta, and we're going to launch our first oh, race wow. off tomorrow, right? So um, I had a lady who joined me. And she was in the AJC, and we can refer this on, you know, later on if you want, so it's public knowledge. And I had her join me in 2018 last year in January. So she came to me brand new. And she said, I don't feel good. I'm not, mm. I'm lethargic. I'm, I have no energy. I don't, I look frumpy. And I said, okay. So she came to me, and we just eased into this. And I said, you know what? Why don't you just do the 5K month challenge? Why don't you start with your first 5K? Just one simple thing. She can walk 3.2 miles. So she did. I have the great picture of her. I was cheering her on as she came across the finish line. And she looked like she was about ready to die. But she made it. <laughs> and her picture is awesome because she's just like, <gasps> you know, and she made it. Well, the next month, I said, let's just do one more race. Okay, I can do this. So she does one more race. And then another race. And then, well, we're in June and she does another race. Well, long behold... By the th I think the 10th race of the year, she upped the race and did a 10K. Okay. It, that was mental. She felt, well, if I could do the five, I can do a 10. And that was all mental. Hmm. Right? So we get her to the, the 10K. And then she does another race. And then we hit November. And she did a half marathon. Oh, wow. She came to me to lose some weight. But what she ended up doing, and it was she ended up using her, she released a lot of mental weight. And through this entire process, she lost 40 pounds in one year. Wow. But more importantly, her biggest achievement, she will tell you, is crossing the finish line. She released 40 pounds. She released 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's not lost. Because we're not, we're not, I love that. I'm going to keep that. I love that. that. I <laughs> we're not, not going to go find it. You can have it. <laughs> I'm sure I stole it. But anyway, um, so when she released her 40 pounds was great, but her biggest achievement was pushing herself. It was the mental part of crossing that finish line with us in Alpharetta in November doing that half marathon. And that was the mental part about that. Releasing the weight is one thing, but releasing mental weight is a whole nother thing. We are stressed out, overworked, underpaid, um, doing too many things. We're in a fast paced culture and we just need to get um, that, that one a month 5K gave her some simplicity. So I tell people to do something that they can feel successful at that breeds consistency. Mm. One simple thing, one small choice plus consistency over time yeah. equals a radical difference. You use that word consistency a bunch. So we're going to go into break. Uh, okay. When we come back, uh, I'm going to challenge you with some of what are the good steps or first few steps that we can be taking okay. now to get us kind of on the right path for 2019. I can do that. Okay. All right. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, 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 hi. 
here's your coaching minute for the week presented to you by the Leadership Foundry. So building credibility is essential to us as leaders, both in terms of working with our team, but also in terms of building credibility with others. One of the easy ways to do that is to focus on being more responsive. How responsive are you to emails, whether it's from your team or other leaders? That is a, as a good friend of mine and guest on regular guest on my podcast, John Kim says, responsiveness is cheap currency. And what John means by that is it's really easy to do, but it goes a long way. I had a leader I worked with several years ago and he would typically respond to emails four to six weeks after they were sent and he had no credibility with his team. So here's a challenge for you. Work on your responsiveness. Can you respond to emails within 24 to 48 hours? Now, what that doesn't mean is you have to respond with an answer. It can just simply mean, hey, I got it. I'll get back to you by whatever date. But by focusing on responsiveness, that can enhance your credibility. So give it a try. Welcome back from break. This is, of course, the Brandon Smith Show. And today we're talking about health and wellness and your health and wellness for this year. And so I've got Jacinta Harb with us. And Jacinta, we were talking a lot about how to kind of how you think about this and how you think about those five spokes to the wheel and Mm -hmm. you really kind of treat the whole person when they come in. So they may have a presenting itch they want scratched or thing that they want to to get better, like I want to lose weight or or I want to have more energy. And then you kind of treat the whole person. And you gave that great example of the client that you had mm-hmm. that started off and they had to commit to a 5K every month mm-hmm. and pretty soon they were running a 10K and then they got in even down to a half marathon mm-hmm. and lost 40 pounds. I mean, it's a yes. great story. So it immediately begs this question that I teed up before break. If we want to get started today, where do we start? So we have all these life demands. We, we may have a um, busy work schedule. I always talk about in the workplace What I find to be true everywhere is time is everyone's most precious resource and everything is urgent all the time. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of anxiety whirlwind that we're in all the time. Plus we've got family demands. We may have kids and we've got uh, all that stuff. Um, How do we, how do we stay focused and disciplined? And, and I love the word you use consistent. How do we, how do we put that in there when we're in this firefighting life? Great question. That's a big question. I know. (laughs) Well, let's get rocking. We need some tips. We need some hardcore tips to help your listeners. Yep. All right? Yep. Number one. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. You know what? You are the CEO of your health and wellness. I am the CEO of Sparkle (laughs) Wellness. My CEO is not doing a break. All righty. Okay. Well, let's talk about (laughs) that. I need to fire my CEO. Number one (laughs) is to remember you are the CEO of your health and wellness. What I mean by that is that only you can take care of you. Someone can come clean your toilets, right? Yep. Right? Someone can wash your car. Yep. Right? Someone can do your lawn, but only there's only certain things that you can do for you. That's true. So I say yeah, a lot you of your listeners you are professionals. Outsource, you, no, you can't outsource that. Yep. Right? And we can't do That's diets true. and gimmicks. They do not work. What we have to do is old fashioned, real work, hard work. You're the CEO. How are you running your company? Right? You're the most... Impo- <laughs> like I said, I think my CEO is <laughs> on probation right now. You are... <laughs> no, it's not good. He's been, he's been a little free spending. Oh, he hasn't, he, hasn't, <laughs> he hasn't been really watching the budget very well. He's just... Woo! That's your CFO. <laughs> We're the CFO, the COO, the CEO of our health and wellness, right? In yep. our lives. And yep. so our most important commitment... As a matter of fact, our longest commitment... Like, I'm only with you for what? Maybe an hour yeah. today? Yeah. You're with yourself... 24 hours. You are your most important person. Being unhealthy is being selfish. Being healthy is being loving. Yeah. Okay. So it's that, it's that mindset of it's, it's on you. You, you are responsible for that and responsible for your own health. And be thankful that you can control that. It's not anybody else's hand. Yeah, that's true. Right? And be yeah. grateful that you have the power of that fork to decide what you're going to choose. Foods to derail you or foods to propel your life. You decide. You're the CEO. Everybody listening wants to be a CEO. I promise. But we are. All of us are CEOs in our own health and wellness. That's our company. We're running. We get one shot. Yeah. Okay? That's a great first tip. Second tip is say no to things so you can say yes to what you really want. I call it the no yes philosophy. 
A lot of your listeners are busy. I can't stand that word. I say productive. Okay. Right? If you call me and say, Jacinta, how was your day? And I'll say it was very full and productive. Right? And it was. Because I know what to say no to and I know what to say yes to. I said yes to coming here today. Yeah. That was a great, great thing. Right? So I said no to scheduling clients this afternoon. Right? Because yeah, this was important true. to me. This is a priority for me and my company and my listeners and my fan club. Right? So say no to, let your no's be no, but you can't say no unless you know what you're saying yes to. So for example, like a food temptation. Tonight you're at a party, it's Friday night, whatever. You're going to say no because you want to say yes to getting your uh, cholesterol level down. Mm, right? Mm, yeah. No means yes in Sparkle World. Saying no means you're saying yes to something better. If you don't know what you're saying yes to, then you will cave in every time. So what I'm hearing you say right there, which is a really important point, you've got to figure out what you want to say yes to first. Mm -hmm. So then you know what to say no to. Because the whole time you were talking, I was thinking in the back of my mind, I was thinking, yeah, well, how do you know what to say no to? And for some people, no, saying no is really hard. Absolutely. And, um, and we could even go down that path of overcoming some of those beliefs that people have that um, I, I have to self-sacrifice for others. Absolutely. Or, so I have to say yes to anything, anyone. So if someone offers me food, for example, I should say yes because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm. But that's not healthy. because you're Right. But that's a, but some people have a hard time Remember, saying no. Being healthy is being loving. That's being right. healthy is being loving, I right? I, I think I'm getting this. Okay, you getting this? Yeah. Right? So being unhealthy is being selfish. And therefore, you're unhealthiness will lead to someone else having to help take care of that for years to come maybe yeah absolutely right so you're going to be a better podcaster because you're going to be healthy okay so i'm going to say yes to i'm the ceo of my business which you're is my it. health yeah. what am i going to say yes to what am i going to say no to okay i got it right are there are there any more tips you have for us so each morning when you wake up I love, you know, all of my famous people that I love to follow who motivate me, the morning routine is absolutely critical. It is what makes us who are successful rock stars in our world, our morning routine. So what does that look like? Our brain is proven to be most creative, most powerful in the morning. We have just rested all night. Mm. So when we get up, a lot of people just get up and they're in a flurry. They're rushing out the door, grabbing this, doing this. They're not even properly eating, first of all. And they're not even thinking. So you want to get up and allow yourself. It could just be your, you know, Tony Robbins, which, you know, obviously is Tony. If, can, I, can I say his name, right? Sure, you can say Tony Robbins. I love Tony Robbins. I got to see him in person like two years ago. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Someone said, Jacinta, you're the great combination between, um, what did they say, um, uh, a nutritionist and Tony Robbins. And I said, I'll take it. Okay. Right? He says you have to have 30 minutes to thrive. I'm stealing that straight from yeah, Tony. 30, 30 minutes to thrive. In the morning. In the morning. Okay. Right? And so what do, you, what do you do with those 30 minutes? So in order to get your day going and to be the CEO, you're waking up and you're going to talk to yourself. This is not your to-do list. You're going to ask yourself one question. What do I need to do today? What are the three things? I'm sorry. What are the three things I need to do today? For me, for my health and wellness. Okay. So if I were to give you an answer, right? Number one, planning. Most of my clients who are having str or struggles and issues is poor, for poor planning. They didn't plan their lunch. You didn't, when you were traveling, you didn't look up the menu before you were eating to decide what you want to have. Look for the healthy options. You just went in and right. And you had fried calamari, you had, you know, I told you, I, pasta, you know, my, Alfredo. My CFO <laughs> is on vacation. The CEO is like, woo, this is great. Yep. Someone like me helps you plan for that stuff. I actually do. I help you plan for all the special events in your life, vacations, everything. I sit and plan with you. So when you go to Italy for two weeks, you come back feeling like joyful, peaceful, and successful. Because we plan for it. Number yeah. one, plan. Well, planning in your, when you ask that question to yourself that morning, what do I need to do? I need to have my lunch ready to go. I need to have my gym bag packed. I need to talk to the, you know, whatever, to the babysitter, whatever that may be for your people, right? Yep. But you have to have a plan, okay, right? Okay, so, so in, now, the, in the 30 minutes that we're trying to thrive, you said the three questions, and then you said the first one was planning. Yes. 
The second one is, you know, being accountable. If it's weight loss, if we're going to go just weight loss, yeah. which is my obviously one of my specialties, is, you know, um, intaking your food. People call it diary, journaling, tracking, whatever it is. Remember, your body's keeping track anyway, but this will be the hard copy. So the tools out there that we use are amazing. The online tools, whatever tool that they need to use. So are they planning? Have they planned? Are they tracking? Are they being accountable for the food that they are eating? Yeah. Okay. The last one is activity. The acronym is PTA. Planning, tracking, activity. What activity will I be doing today? Right? Okay. So that is one An question. activity could be going for a walk. Absolutely. Be, going for the walk. It could be going to the gym. It could, it could be could. stretching at home. Okay. It doesn't have to be. And it all depends where they're at is how I, I manage my clients. If you came to me and said, just then so you know, I need to start my exercise routine, well, I'd start, I'd meet you where you're at. Yeah. Right? But if you say, Jacinta, you know, I want to go kill it. You know what I mean? I'll say, well, let's let's go, you know, why don't you try CrossFit? Right? You know what I mean? Let's do that. You know what I mean? But I will meet them where they're at, and we will start small, and then we will expand. That makes perfect sense. Planning, tracking, activity. What's, what's, the, what's the three most important things that you need to do today for you to be propelling you on your health and wellness journey? Yeah, I, that's got me thinking. I have really not done much on planning. I don't track a, a, at all. <laughs> Zero. So we manage what we monitor. I do some activity. Okay. Yeah, I do activity. Well, good. So I got, I got that's that. good. But I don't, I don't know if the activity of me working out in the gym is um, offsetting the activity of me moving the fork to my mouth. You can't outrun your fork, I, I okay? I, <laughs> I can tell you I, that. I'm not sure about that one. You can't outrun your fork. You know, it is true, and it's never going to change, but it is 80% your, uh, your food intake, your quality of food, your quantity of food, and why you're eating it. That's what I manage with my clients. So when they come to me, I do monitor all of their food. I can see everything they're eating and drinking, my private clients, my group clients, I do not, that's a different kind of uh, coaching service. Yeah. But my private clients, I get to help them in a very friendly, encouraging, motivational way. I get to see their food intake. And each day, I get to sign off with them and saying, job well done, I love all those fruits and veggies. I see the color of the rainbow, well done, right? Nice. Right, or you're killing it. That's a great calorie burn at Orange Theory that day, right, whatever. But I, I'm like their raw, raw girl, and I will guide them. And if I see something that looks a little, you know, um, I don't know, unhealthy, shall we say, I'll gently remind them sugar is a huge culprit in today's society. It's eight times more addictive than cocaine. It's highly palatable. It's, it's, it's killing people. It's killing us. It's killing everybody. It's killing children. Um, I see a lot of sugar. So I will gently navigate a client to saying, you know what, you're really sweet enough and that's all I have to say. What if they're not? They all, they, all <laughs> my clients are sweet. Is everybody listening? They're all sweet, right? So I just help them. It just, and it's awareness. I yeah. shed a lot of light on them. And they may have these little light bulb moments and these small changes. Again, fast forward, they will lead to radical changes. But that's even, even going back to the, the gifts and tips you've already given us. Even the second one where you talked about what are you going to say yes to and what are you going to say no to? You know, sugar could be a good example of that. You might say no, oh, no to sugar or no to some sugar, uh, maybe not all. Yeah. So I can say yes to feeling better or better yes skin. to better skin or yes to, uh, you know, uh, fitting into my clothes better or those kinds Sleeping of things. Better. Sugar, Sleeping better. Sleeping better. Yeah, absolutely. And it's in, I did, um, it's a whole other story. Okay. I, <laughs> I did Whole30 for a period of time, not quite the 30. Because and my body did not react well to it. I was grumpy and just unhappy the entire time, and I actually got like lightheaded um, because my blood pressure dropped so quickly. Okay. Um, but um, part of it is removing sugar, and so when you when I, the hard part was, I could not believe how much sugar is in everything, from sauces to I mean, it, it's it, it's in everything. So you you became aware when you knew it was you had to look for it, right? Yeah. See, that knowledge gave you power. Yeah, I mean, 90% of things, it seemed like, had sugar in it. And you're correct. And then I had 10% to choose from mm -hmm. that, was, that, was, that didn't have sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was very interesting to kind of see that. 
So, okay, we're all, we're getting we're pretty much at time. So Already? I, I, I know time flies. I know. I guess so, I'm coming back. <laughs> you are. So when we at, well, I always ask all my guests this question: um, If what's one good life hack you have for us to help us live a life more free from dysfunction? And it could be personal, it could be professional. There's no right or wrong answer to this, but just one good life hack you'd want people to leave come away from. I'm going to I'm going to give you this one just because it's one of my all-time favorites and it's just who I am and it's what I want okay. for everybody. Go for it. Each and every day there's opportunities for things and for people and things for not to go our way. But it, it's always how we look at it. So when I have a client or a friend or whatever family member and they tell me something, I'll just look at them with a smile and a sparkle and I'll say, don't let anyone or anything ever dull your sparkle. Mm. I have that sign by my bed, in my office. I have bracelets, shirts, sweatshirts, jewelry, socks. I'm actually wearing socks you're, right now. You're very sparkly, by the way. Thank you. For those listeners who can't <laughs> see you, you're missing out, quite sparkly. And what that means is don't let you be the one to dull your own sparkle. Yeah, that's right? great. Tip. And don't let anyone dull your sparkle. We're working too hard to keep our inner our inner strength and our, and our positivity up. That's, that, I, I, speaking from my own personal self, that's hard. It's hard to not let other people's opinions or thoughts or comments uh, bring you down. What, I totally get that. The key word in that, don't let anyone ever dull your sparkle or anything is the word let. Yeah. You have the power. You get to decide. Back to the whole CEO thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if people want to learn more about you, learn more about kind of what you do or the services you provide your clients, where can they go? So my website is actually Sparkle A New You. All one word. All Sparkle one word. A New You. Sparkle A New You. And they can find me on the website, of course. And I do private coaching and I do group coaching. I, I have three classes at my Roswell location. So do they do those? Can, can they do those virtually with you as well? They cannot do those virtually, but they can do the private coaching virtually okay so yes. the coaching virtual but the group coaching they would need to be there absolutely got it absolutely Great. absolutely and everything on the website even the topics i'm teaching on this month it's just you know you can go look at my success stars and people who have been featured in the um, atlanta journal constitution and see all the articles there and i would love you for come for a free class anyone can come see me for a free consultation or a free class at any time that's fantastic well thank you you're amazing you're sparkly thank Thank, thank you, you for having me. Thank you for all the gifts you've given us. I, I'm already going to take some and work on them. I've got some. I got some. Well, then I use my gifts some, today. I got some conversations to have with my CEO. CEO. <laughs> by the way. He's not. He's not in good shape. <laughs> and thank you all for listening. Um, catch a new show each and every Sunday at 7:30 p.m. on iTunes. Dot the Brandon Smith Show dot com and live on Facebook dot com forward slash Brandon Smith WPT for workplace therapist. And if you've enjoyed today's show, and we certainly hope you have, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. That's how more people find the show and more people can be workplace dysfunction warriors. I'm taking the warriors. Yes! Warriors so we can make our workplaces and our lives that much better. So until the next time our paths cross, have a great week and an awesome life.